Hi, I'm here with Africa X5 on Oxford Street. My name's Jessica and I'm here to ask the members of the public a few questions that you guys wanted answers to. Okay, I think um, there is an increase. I think mainly probably because um, there's less opportunities for, for um, youth and teenagers this day, um, today in this day and age. Um, universities are so expensive. Um, I think pretty much it's probably more the state to blame than um, families. I think that a lot of teenagers feel like they don't have a place or have opportunity to develop and become um, successful people when they find themselves trapped and not knowing what to do and then this um, I think encourages that sort of violence. violence. I think there are a number of contributory factors to youth violence. Um, I don't think it's a new thing though. Um, I just think it's different and I think that um, we're now that they're now using tools um, as in a knife, a knife and gun, um, guns which is uh, terrible. Um, I think there's uh, media I think there's a lot of media portrayal. Um, I think there's. I think it's very hard for, particularly young males, to find their identity. Um, uh, I think it's. Uh, I think they've. Um, some of them have gravitated to the wrong um, tribes. I call them. Um, um, I think because there's a lack of there's a lack of um, a lot of resources. So um, I think there's not enough taught in schools um, socially um, about uh, bonding, male bonding in particular, um, and what that looks like, what that feels like, um, and so um, they they gravitate to each other and um, uh, express themselves in a violent way. Sometimes sometimes I'm using massive generalisations. There's a lot of wonderful men out there. And young men. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. There's there's also I think uh, um, uh, uh, there's a turn off to um, education with a lot of young people as well. Um, we need to make that cool again. Um, that being in in school and doing well in school is cool. Yeah, I think we're going back to a time when um, it was only it was very elitist to go to um, university, and it was only the um, very wealthy that were able to do that. And we've I think we've regressed and gone back to that time. Um, so unfortunately there's a lot of disenfranchised youth out there not knowing really what to do with themselves um, or have um, you know who are very capable of learning but the educational system is only geared up to one type of learning there's that as well um, so I think there's low there's quite a lot of different factors um, yeah you could talk about gaming as well you know this is another thing you know music yeah lots lots and lots of different ones and we're not just talking about young males as well because there's been an increase in violence with young women as well i think so yeah um of course there is an increase in youth violence and uh, why i think there's an increase it's um the social media and the generation the world is speeding right everyone wants to be that next thing right and to be that next thing or be noticed kids find themselves in all sorts of negative things to get there because there's all the bullying and everything that happens online and these things leads outside of you know the app exactly and it goes into the streets and then they take it out on other people people they see beneath them or someone weaker than them and and that's the reason why youths are so violent today because we're li we're living in such a fast-paced world that you don't even have time to think properly and that's why kids make these wrong decisions and get involved in violence. So do you think the state is to blame or the family or parents in fact? I think everyone has a contributing factor towards it and I, what my, I, the state is trying to help but the state can only do that this much. The, 
what's happening at home, it needs to start there as well. So I think everyone needs to contribute together and that's where we can come to a good solution to the violence amongst kids. And last question, yeah. thank you so much for that. Um, do you think we as a generation, or would I say this time, because even me, I'm African, so growing up, I was kind of disciplined, a little bit different to how kids are disciplined today. So would you say that our parents have become a little slack or are we not doing enough or are we a bit too harsh? What would you say? Okay, well, first I must say corporal punishment is now illegal in a lot of countries. And me being from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean, I, I got the belt, I got the hanger, I got, I got the discipline which I deserved basically. And that has shaped me to be the person that I am today, respectful and learn when to turn away from things. And today, yes, parents are a bit slack, but also everyone is to blame. If it's illegal, then kids feel the right to you know, do things. And then I would take it back to social media, the you would look at kids around their age talking to their parents in a type of way and making fun of it and then be being influencers for making fun of all these things that can contribute towards negative negativity amongst the younger generation so yes the parents are a bit slack and there should be boundaries and when things should be stopped etc you can only use this app for a certain amount of time and block them from apps and i guess raise the parental age for certain apps like Instagram and, and Facebook and what you see etc. So that's what I was about to even say do you think the age of content is too low in terms of the internet social media do you think it's too low and it needs to be raised up with that hit on the question you yeah, said yes. Said yes of course of course it should be raised and things should be censored and things shouldn't stay on the internet for long if it's reported play Facebook, uh, they're billionaires. They should have enough infrastructure to get these things off as soon as possible before others can see it and try to reenact it. Because, you know, yeah, people die from trying to jump off cliffs, being influencers, etc. So it's, it's all a bit mad. We're living in a mad world. Being a youth yourself, would you say that there's an increase in youth violence? If so, why? There's definitely an increase in youth violence. Not too sure why. I think it's because it's just a thing of following groups if that makes sense so like it's almost like a trend which is horrible to think of but it's yeah that's all I can think of do you, so would you say that in terms of following the trend and the the rising because when I look when I turn on the news I'm literally faced with knife crime here knife crime there so who do you think is to blame? Do you think that the government's not doing enough or do you think that the parents should be maybe stepping in a little bit more harder on, on their kids? Well, I'm a parent as well. I have a two-year-old. so Congratulations. <laughs> so I would say that it's probably a little bit of both. The government needs to step in more because they not they don't do enough anyway for anything. No offence. Um, and the parents, you know, they shouldn't expose the kids to that kind of violence in the first place anyway even though it's hard to it's kind of hard to hide it but if the parents kept an eye on their kids a little bit more then maybe they might be different. yeah so do you think there is enough of things out there for kids to do at this moment in time no like i um because i'm from wales as well so i used to go to like youth clubs and all sorts whereas there's not a lot of that now like I think kids get told off for doing things like graffiti, even though that might be their way of expressing things. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, when I came to UK in 99, um, I used to live in like East London, Newham, like near Hackney and stuff like that. And I remember crime rates were generally quite high then, yeah. Um, to say that it's dropped or increased, I don't know. I, I know knife crime is definitely, I think it's increased right now. I don't mean it's really high. That's what we're talking about with One Love today. Um, but yeah, so I think knife crime has gone up. I have been in situations myself where I've been affected. Some of my colleagues have as well, so it's real, it's definitely happening. I don't know what there is to do about knife crime, but... Man. So do you think it's the state to blame or, 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 or family? Um, no, it's more to do with upbringing, I think, obviously. Like, I, I, I think it's more to do with how you're brought up and the, the circumstance, the conditions. You know, sometimes it's where you're from as well. Like, it's hard to get out of certain types of lifestyle sometimes I'm speaking from my own kind of experience I'm trying to always trying to change like people always telling me like you should change this change that it's, it's hard to get out of that kind of maybe lifestyle in a sense and I understand people that go through through this but it's more to do with yeah like family and 
I think with the increase in poverty and the increase in what the political status is of our country, the youth don't have much to do with their time. So instead of actually going to youth clubs, playing football with their friends, they're getting involved in gang violence and gang crime and just violence in general. And that's causing a lot of their problems, I guess. And that's why it's increasing. So would you say the state is to blame in terms of that or is the family to, does the family have a hand in it as well? I think the family are probably under their own kind of pressures. I think a lot of parents work a lot of the time, so they're trying to fund for their children and they don't have time to look after them all the time. So because the kids have nowhere to go and nothing to do, they're kind of falling onto like other people who are like, involved with crime and things like that. It's also another thing I think is music as well. I think a lot of angry music. Um, my little brother, he's 14, and he's been involved in a lot of problems at school, a lot of fighting. and. I ask him like, oh, what kind of music do you listen to? And it's all this like violent, like rapping music. I love rap as well, but it's like, if a, if a, yeah, if a 14 year old is listening to that and they're talking about, oh, I'm gonna shank you, I'm gonna do this to you. Like that's gonna get them hyped up, especially around their, their puberty time and things like that. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Their emotions are kind of all up in the air and like, I feel like they kind of act um, rather like on rational, but based on like what they're influenced by. So in just one more question. So thank you for your time. Um, literally, do you think that we as a community in terms of our parents, like you said, you know, our parents are always working. Some, some of them may not have enough time to do what they're meant to do in terms of looking after their kids. Do you think that they've become a little slack in the way that they are disciplining them or do you think that they're harsh? I always have this problem with my mum. I said, you need to take his PlayStation off him. He's, he's had a big fight. You need to take his PlayStation off him. But I think they're in school from nine in the morning till three o'clock at night. We, the parents only get to see them so many hours a day. So ha what are they meant to implement in that time? I do think it's a school, a school issue. I also think it's a community issue. I don't think it's specifically on parents. Um, yeah. What would you say? I think it's on parents as well because if you are at work all day and you only see your child for about two, three hours, you should give them, you know, you should set a good example for them. If they're, you know, if they're feeling neglected, um, then they are going to want to go on Netflix and watch a programme that's going to influence them to do bad or to kind of like envy what their lives are like and just want money and kind of get into things that are uh, bad for you and not, that you're not meant to do at that age group and I definitely agree with the music thing and they should just how there's a band on movies that you can't watch from a certain age I think kids shouldn't be doing that either because there's really young kids saying things that they shouldn't be and that will kind of follow up and lead on and other kids will get influenced by it and one bad parent will make a whole class influence yeah 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 whole child bad and then that child will influence his other classmates and his friends and that's what I think yeah. yeah, I've definitely, obviously living in London, I've definitely noticed an increase in violence, knife crime being one of them, uh, especially reading the news, you kind of see it on a daily basis now. Um, and I think it is down to more government funding, the fact that youth centres are closing, the support network, especially for ethnic minorities. Um, I, I mean, it's hard for me because I'm a white woman, but I just, you know, it's... I feel like they're kind of cast aside or there's not much tension that's needed for the support and I think you're right like families as well families need that support you know parents if their kids are falling into crime or gangs or the violence in schools so would you say that there is maybe a lack of help towards ethnic minorities yeah. in that sense because obviously when I look at growing up, when I look at the, the areas that I was raised in, like you said, there is, there is lesser and lesser of the youth clubs. There is hardly any, in fact. So having those in place, would you say that would reduce the risk of, of crime? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think if you're pointed out or bullied or anything in school, you're not really wanting to go there. And then if you haven't got many friends outside, but there's a youth centre or somewhere you can feel safe, that's not at home, that is where you would go. So I think without that, you kind of either fall in, what do you fall into? Like there's nowhere for you to really go. So then you might either fall into, you might be, um, what's the word? Oh, I can't think of the word. But if someone might be able to um, persuade you, you might be more persuaded into doing things you might not want to because you haven't got that environment where you feel you can be.